Hey, this is Bad Movie Mark with the Bad Movie Mark Movie Review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 1966 Jack Nicholson Western Extravaganza The Shooting. I don't understand that at all. It's a terrible thing. Hey, that's that's not fair. This review is gonna be it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be kind of right there in the middle, right there where it belongs. Uh, I'm reviewing every movie that has 100% fresh rain on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm giving them all a score of one to ten. After I watch them and score them all, I will rank them from worst to best. I started in the 1920s silent movie era, and now I'm at 1966 with the shooting. This movie has 100% fresh rating from the critics, and oh man, a 64% fresh rating from the audience, which is just. Just not where you want to be. You want that audience on your side. <laughs> Just, oh, man. Uh, it stars Millie Perkins as woman. So of the last three movies that I've reviewed, two of them have had the lead leading lady named woman. So uh, good job, 1966, at naming your female characters. Uh, fantastic job. Also stars Jack Nicholson as Billy Spear, Will Hutchins as Cooley, and Warren Oates as Willet Gashade. I'm just going to guess that he was not a member of Hall and Oates, but it's possible. Uh, I haven't done any research on that, but as soon as I heard Will Warren Oates, that's the first thing I thought of. Um, so when I first saw that Jack Nicholson was in a movie that was 100% fresh that was a Western. Uh, it piqued my interest because Jack Nicholson is one of the greatest actors of all time. I think he's won like four acting Oscars, which is just insane. Uh, this movie's 100% fresh. I had no idea he was in a Western. I don't think I've ever seen him in a Western before. So uh, yeah, I thought, wow, this it's, it's early in his career. Actually, this is the earliest movie I've ever seen with him. I think before this, he only really did a couple movies and television, so it's very early in his career. It's when he's hungry for those good roles. It's when he's ready to make a mark on society. It's, re it's when he's ready to show everyone what he's made of. So, of course, this is going to be a great movie, right? Uh, no. Not at all. And the movie is really dragged down, not only by the script, it's a lazy script. Uh, the story is really easy. It's an hour and 20 minutes long. Um, it's not too overly complicated. For a Western, it's very cut and dry. You know, it's very like par for the course. And you would assume that with the like reviews that I've done for Westerns so far, that I hate Westerns because uh, I give them like eights, eight and, a, eight and a half, like I think it may be seven and a half. Um, not terrific scores, but it's it's just not true. Westerns are one of my favorite genres of all time, and I think that's why I am so critical of them. Uh, some of my favorite Westerns would be The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, The Wild Bunch, The Searchers, The Magnificent Seven. Uh, I love Westerns, but this Western, uh, not so much. This Western was just pretty much bad. And it's really bogged down a lot by uh, Millie Perkins, who was also in the movie The Diary of Anne Frank. She played Anne Frank. Uh, I've seen it I like 20 years ago, so I really don't remember how good she was in that movie. Uh, but she's really just not good in this movie. She's actually terrible. And she is the driving force of this movie. She like The men follow her. She is in charge. She's the one who... Um, really the one who makes the action happen in this movie and it's and she's not good and it's just it really um it's really sad maybe this movie could have been better probably not but if they had had a better actress instead of her maybe this could have been better uh, the actor who played Cooley Will Hutchins is not that great either uh but his Bad acting is kind of shielded by her bad acting because she's so much worse. So really, it's a toss-up. Uh, you could pick either one here. Jack Nicholson is the best actor, but he's not given that much to do. Uh, he's kind of like the hired gun. He's the one who's the quick draw. He's the one who could kill you in a moment's notice whenever he wants, so you don't want to mess with him. And because of that, he doesn't talk that much. He just like looks menacing. You know, he looks the part. He wears... Uh, three layers of clothing in 100 degree weather while he's <laughs> while he's riding a horse in the desert. Uh, you know, he's like they're supposed to be that rough, that rough and tumble type character. Um, and he doesn't do that much. But, you know, I guess because of that, uh, because he doesn't give a, have a lot of time to fail, uh, he's the best. So essentially what this movie is about is the main character, Willet Gashade. He has, uh, he's going to his friend's house. He's been away for some time. Uh, but he pulls up, he parks his horse, and he uh, calls over somebody to help him because he doesn't want to unpack the horse. He doesn't want to put the horse away. He's just tired. Uh, and he's a bit bothered because no one's coming over to help him. So he wanders around and he sees a grave, and the grave is for the friend he actually came to visit, who is Leland Drum. Leland Drum, a good friend shot dead. I don't know 
what? And buried in this spot by Coley Bowyer, his good friend, in April. Holy! Now, Leland Drum, um, it says he died in April, which uh, it seems like is supposed to be the month that they're in, so he died recently. Um, as he's reading the grave, someone starts shooting at him, and <laughs> the person who's shooting at him is his friend Cooley, who started shooting at him because he was, uh, he was a little jittery. Uh, he's a bit disheveled because he... Uh, he was told Drum was killed by one of his friends, uh, Cohen. Cohen. Uh, so Cohen came down and he said that uh, Drum was killed and because uh, they might have accidentally stampled over and killed a child while they were in town. Uh, so Drum was killed at that point and now someone's after Cohen. So Cohen like hightails it out of there and he leaves Cooley there to like fend for himself. So Cooley uh, is not a very sharp person. He's actually kind of uh, slow in the head. Um, and he's not very good with a gun from what we're told. Uh, and he, later on in the movie, you will also see that he doesn't really know how to use a gun. Um, but when, so he's firing at uh, Willick the Shade and he's missing. He's missing every bullet that he fires. So eventually Willick the Shade convinces Cooley that he is who he is. Cooley tells him the story about how um, Cohen is on the run because he might have killed a child in town. Now, Cache can't figure out why if he killed a child in town, no one's coming after him. Like, no, it doesn't seem like anyone has attempted to capture him. No one's come to his house. Like, no, there's no, he doesn't know if there's a bounty on his head, but you would think someone would come for the bounty on his head, but who knows? So while they're at the house one day, uh, they hear more gunfire and uh, in walks in Billy Perkins. It's a woman. who said she just shot her horse because her horse went lame and she needs someone to help her into town uh, for whatever reason, I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. Um, she ends up paying them a lot of money. I think it's like $1,000, which I'm sure was a lot of money back then. Um, and they agree to take her into town. Now, when Willett Gachet passes her horse, he notices that the horse is not lame, as there's no sign of lameness. So he starts to think like, what's really going on here? Like there's something, there's something sketchy going on here. Uh, so as they are, uh, after they like accept her offer, she, <laughs> one of the worst, the second worst acting performance from her in this movie is when they try to give her a towel to like wipe her face and she acts completely disgusted by it. Oh, ah! oh I'm sorry. Whoa, phew, what is that? Well, it's all I could find. Some type of snakes uh, know to take her off in that water. In this water? Oh, yeah, and uh, people been known to swallow one of their little eggs and it'll hatch out inside them without they knowing it till it's too late. What do you mean, too late? <laughs> like, she doesn't know she's in the wild, right? She doesn't know that, like, these are the type of things that happen. Like, maybe sometimes you have to use a dirty towel because you're, like, you're not anywhere near a town, so maybe you have to use a dirty rag every now and then, but someone forgot to tell her that and she makes a really big scene out of it. Uh, so they start heading to town, but it, it becomes apparent that she doesn't actually want to go to this town, that she's trying to follow these tracks that were left, so she's tracking someone. Gee, I wonder who could, she could be tracking. Who could who was on the lamb that she could be tracking uh, that might have a bounty hunter after him? Oh, geez, I wish I could think. I wish I could think of someone. Uh, but she randomly is shooting her gun as she's, like, traveling with them. And finally, uh, Will, it, like, calls her out on it. He's like, who are you signaling with that gun? Obviously, you're trying to tell someone where we are. You're trying to signal someone. People just don't randomly shoot their guns. And this is where she gives her worst acting performance here. Um, I'm not going to explain it. I'll just leave it for you to, to gaze at. What's this shooting all the time? You're trying to tell someone where we're at, ain't that so? You're so stupid. You're going to tell me what this is all about. I hate you. Well, she is practicing, Will. Um, so after this, uh, we soon meet the man that she is signaling, and that is Billy Spear, who is played by Jack Nicholson. This is Billy Spear. 
He wasn't to join us until later. But now it doesn't matter. He's here. He'll be going on with us. That figures. He has a hired gun who she hired to follow them um, for some reason. Now, I know the reason, uh, but it doesn't really uh, become apparent l until later, unless you've already figured out who they're chasing and what they're, why they're chasing this person. Uh, so they end up going on their way, and then at some point they stop and they make Cooley like, like stay in the desert by himself so that they can get Willet like by himself, I guess. No, you take him. You want to ride with me, boy? Leave him. You better be Japen. I ain't. Mr. Gachet, it's not a bad idea. That's what I was thinking. They want to get Willow alone, so they leave Cooley out in the middle of the desert. Cooley ends up being a horse, and he learns that um, Billy Spear was actually the one who killed Drum. And so he's trying to go and alert uh, Willett, that these two people were the ones who killed Drum. Now, I'm pretty sure Willett's already figured this out, <laughs> because, uh, like, who else, like, what else would they be doing? I mean, there's a ton of clues here that she's trying to signal someone, he's a hired hand, uh, you know, Cohen's on the run. You just gotta put the pieces together and you can figure this out pretty easily. Uh, so at the end of the movie, uh, they end up catching up to Cohen, and uh, he ends up uh, shooting at uh, the woman, but uh, Willett for some reason jumps in front of her and takes the bullets and uh, it's in slow motion and that's the end of the movie. Did Cohen survive? I don't know. Uh, I couldn't tell you. Uh, does it matter? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that either, actually. Um, and what about, uh, so Billy Sparr, he ended up getting in a fight with Willett, and Willett like, injured his shooting hand, but he didn't kill him, so Willett Sparr is still around. The woman's still around. They could easily still go after Cohen. Uh, so why is the rest of the movie, you know? Um, I, I honestly don't know. Um, the, it was very easy to follow, uh, for one. You find out, you could, I mean, they really give it to you right in the beginning of the movie where they show that, uh, one guy's on the run because he probably killed a kid. And then, oh, now there's a hired gun who's after someone. Who, who could it be? Uh, and then at the end of the movie, you're, it's even more frustrating. Because you're like, well, if he killed a kid, I don't want him to live. Like, let the bounty hunter kill him. But of course, uh, Willett can't let that happen because they're friends. So the two people you think are actually the bad guys in the beginning of the movie aren't really that bad because they want to kill this guy who killed a child. And he searches for a bounty. It's for money. They're, do they're not doing it for free. Uh, but there's a principle here. <laughs> Like, they're not the bad guys, they're the good guy. Uh, so if you were rooting for Willett and Coley because Coley is a simpleton and because Willett is kind of being like dragged into this, even though he was paid for it, so really he's not being dragged into it. He accepted this knowing that maybe there was something shady going on. Um, if you're rooting for them, I mean, are you rooting for the right side? Uh, I don't know, like you could be or you could not be. It's I, I have no idea. Uh, I, this movie was, the ending was completely frustrating uh, because, I mean, there's no payoff at all. Um, the person who, uh, the person who really was innocent and everything died. Um, and his friend Cooley died also because Billy Spar shot him. So <laughs> I don't know what to make of this movie. It's just irritating. The acting is bad. Uh, but I will say, I mean, Jack Nicholson is, is good in this movie. Maybe this movie helped to lift his um, lift him as a star. I don't know. I do know that this movie never released in theaters because no one wanted to pick it up. So there was never an audience screening. And I don't think it was shown that uh, widely on television. So it wasn't seen by a wide audience until it was finally like released on DVD. I think it's actually on Criterion, which is even crazier to me. Um, I, I don't know. Um, 
I can't fathom why this movie would have 100% fresh rating from the critics uh, unless it's like a historical reason um, because it's an early work of um, Jack Nicholson. I don't know. Um, uh, I could sit and think about it and labor about it and butter away at this forever, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to say that it's not a very good movie, but it's better than a few of the movies I've seen. So, um, you know, there's no inherent racism in it that I could tell. Actually, there is, <laughs> there is one scene of racism, uh, but no overly done racism, I'll say. Um, animals do die, a couple horses. Um, so, you know, that's a negative. But uh, it's still better than a few of the movies I've seen. So I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. And I hope that I will do better with El Dorado, which is the next movie that I'm going to review. Uh, actually, I've seen it, and uh, if I remember right, it's a great movie. Uh, Robert Mitchum is in it, who is my second favorite actor of all time. Uh, so next time, it's going to be Saturday. I've done a lot of reviews <laughs> over the weekend and today, so I think my next review is going to be Saturday night. I will be doing El Dorado and possibly uh, another movie as well. So thank you. I hope you join me for that. Have a great day.